in most of the world religions there are forms of worship and prayer and celebration which are group or extroverted mm -hmm. in nature they're not introverted yes something a ritual like, or something a ritual yes yes i would say uh, wherever there is a deep archetypal experience which is always a, also an emotional experience there is a spontaneous need for acting it out and in a way that is a ritual and if uh, congenial people are together it can happen that it becomes a group ritual that something is done one does together but if you organize it the great danger is that then people come in who are not in the congenial mood they had just an annoying letter before they at home before they joined or something mm -hmm. or they are just in a sober mood and not not so into it, they are not into it and then it becomes a formalism and a dishonest gesture and that mm -hmm. is the death of all ritual and that that's uh, what makes religions die that their rituals and prayers and gestures always become mechanical mm -hmm. and done by people who don't feel them anymore mm -hmm. more and more and more and that's the great danger that's why you prefer to leave it to the spontaneous happenings the hippies meetings where they just waited for happenings mm -hmm. was close was close to something real mm -hmm. that was quite good one should be if anything i would say one should keep it to such a in such a form <laughs> to come sometimes together and wait for spontaneous happenings uh -huh. what about have you ever seen an american indian dance yes. the whole village participates and they have this long process of preparation as a way i think maybe of bringing each person into it Yes, I haven't been there, but I've read quite a lot about it, and my impression is that that is really genuine. That's not a formalism. That's a, a genuine and living expression of an archetype. Uh -huh. But you hear already now that if Indian children have gone to school and have been indoctrinated by white man's nonsense, they can't participate anymore. Uh -huh. They don't get back into the mood. Uh -huh. So that means as long as you are in it, it's all right, but you can't, it's very difficult to find your way into it again, once your uh, rationalism has thrown you out. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's why I don't know if unions who are not, who come generally from having had a neurosis and having been indoctrinated by rational school education, if they can do it genuinely. I have wondered if there isn't something, for example, what happened in, in uh, Germany, uh, because there was such a sweeping uh, over of the culture and a kind of um, falling into uh, yes. ecstasy almost. Yes, that was a genuine religious phenomenon, but with, in a negative form. In a negative form. In a neg you see, that's the danger. When it happens collectively, it generally slips off into, into the negative. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Jones. It slips off into unconsciousness and letting oneself go into emotions, losing self-control. Well, for instance, those Indian dances, though they are ecstatic, are highly formally controlled. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They are highly formed. Yes. And not just as bleh, letting out one's emotions and falling into them. And you see, religions have a huge shadow. I mean, the Islam who went around and right to the doors of Vienna, beheading everybody who didn't worship Allah, and so on. These are these emotional religions who are just mass movements. Mm -hmm. And they are not, not necessarily something ideal. Mm -hmm. They are just the archetype sweeping people away. You can say, the ones who are in it enjoy it, and the ones who are out of it pay the bill. Mm -hmm. If you don't worship Allah, head off. Mm -hmm. I remember reading about Max Zeller's dream that uh, he was, in working with the inner life, he was building uh, on a temple that would take hundreds of years to be built and Jung called him back after an hour to speak about this dream and he said you know how long it will take for the temple yeah. 600 mm -hmm. years well that image 
uh, is uh, quite a powerful one, as if all this individual work is building a temple. Yes, I think that's what I meant when I said before there are thousands of Jungians who have never heard the name Jung. All the people who are honestly working on their own inner problem in their own way are builders of a new temple and it takes 600 years because that means it takes as long till we are fully in the Aquarian age mm -hmm. and then it will probably come out what was building itself up but one must not want it with one's mind or head or mm -hmm. want to organize it <laughs> one must let that happen that's a dream which would compensate feeling a bit lonely feeling a bit an outsider and the conscious says to him no no do your own job, and you are one of the builders. Uh -huh. Hermes Trismegistus said in, in one active imagination to an alchemist, I am the friend of whoever is lonely. The unconscious doesn't speak to you when you are with people. Your attention goes to the people. Mm -hmm. Well, when you are lonely, I've lived in this tower sometimes three weeks alone without speaking to one word to anybody. And I sometimes thought I was going off my head. But the unconscious became alive. It was my partner. And that's why you have to be lonely so that the unconscious becomes stronger. You, it's like loading up the unconscious and then it manifests. And then you are not lonely anymore. So we have to support the unconscious. It's not enough to, to just have it. We have to actively turn towards it and support it so that it then helps us.